soul, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Now, uh, uh, what, what I, I, I want you to see here, um, now, these mighty men, these mighty men of valor uh, were people of David. These were men. Um, these warriors were exceptional. And uh, what made them exceptional was uh, it says they were armed with bows, so they could they could uh, um, use the bow and arrows. They could they could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones. Okay, so there was you, you had the the ability of the use of their right hand as well as the left as the left hand equally. In, in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of the bowl, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. So these men, uh, David's mighty men of valor, number one, uh, they were, uh, they had pledged themselves to David and um, they were, 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 were men that uh, loved David. They were men that um, were successful in their own right because they had abilities that other men didn't have. None, uh, there were not, there were, um, how should I, I put it, uh, there were certainly other people that, that could go to war, but these that were called the mighty men of valor, they had a special act. They were able to utilize their right hand and their left hand equally. They had the they they could they could hurl stones um, uh, effectively with the right hand and with the left. They could shoot bows with the right or with the left, which gave them a great advantage over the enemy. They were able to shoot arrows out of the bow, scripture says. So these men were what we would call were even handed. Now I don't know what the percentage is, and maybe I should have looked that up before Bible study, but what the percentage of the population is that are even handed. In other words, some people are able to write as well with their right hand and with their left hand. They, they, they have that, that ability. Not everybody has that ability. And you can see uh, uh, how this would be an advantage because if they're in battle, they can, they can take a sword with this hand and with that hand and they, they can, can out outdo uh, their, their, their opponent because they have that ability, okay? And so uh, uh, this was, was David's men, mighty men of valor. They had a sworn allegiance to David and so much so that they went at great risk. There was, there was uh, one of, of the great men of valor when David had simply, they were, they were in battle, and David was thirsty and said, oh, boy, oh, what I would do for a cup of water from, and he said, the place where it was. And these mighty men fought their way through, through the, 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 the battleground, fought their way, and went to that place and got this water for their king, David. That says a lot. That says that they, they were, they, they were uh, their love and their allegiance to, to David was, was so great. Now, I want you to see this. 
that what God desires for us to, when we talk about uh, life in balance, it is that God wants us to be even-handed, okay? He wants us to be even-handed, which means that, that um, you can't have, be strong or, or, or have all this, th th this might in the spirit and, and let your, your body um, just go to, go to dust, okay? I understand if, if you know, sickness has occurred and uh, it, has, it has brought your body down. But what we're saying is, is that uh, it doesn't matter how, how effective, how much you can do in your mind, okay? How much knowledge of God's word you have. If you're not able to stand up and to speak the counsel of God, if you're not able to get out and to witness Amen. You can have all that knowledge, but if your body is broke down, amen, you cannot be as effective as you would if you were balanced. Okay. So uh, what we got to recognize is, is that we living life in balance means that, that uh, we're taking care of not only our spirit, but we're taking care of our flesh. Uh, now, again, the scripture said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That, that's a true statement. But the reality is, is, is that there are some things that we can do to promote our, our uh, wellness. Mentally, our wellness. Emotionally, our wellness. Physically, our wellness. Medically. You know, there are things that we can do, amen, that all of us to bring balance in our lives. And what we find, what you'll find is when you bring balance to your life, amen, uh, things may go a little easier with you. Uh, I've, I've shared this over the years. I try uh, to, to live a, a balanced life uh, in, in my, my emotions, and that's just one area in my emotions. What that means is, is that I try not to, if something uh, good happens, something exciting happens, I try not to get overly emotional about it, okay? Now, there are, there are some of you who, who uh, oh, you, you go right to the mountaintop, right? Uh, something happens and you're just, you know, it's like you're, you're on one of the game shows, you know, and they called your name and, oh, you... you Come on down. The price is right. And oh, you running down there and you hollering. Um, when good things happen, I've learned uh, not to, to, to peak, make my peak so high. What I mean is let my emotions go way up there. Why? Because if my emotions go way up there, at some point it's going to have to come back down. Okay? I'm talking about life in balance. And interestingly enough, uh, the way some graphs ha ha have shown things with emotions, if, if, if your emotions can go that high, when they go down, and this is, this is where, where the, 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 the balance is, and you, it goes that high, when you get depressed or when you, you're sad or something like that, it goes the same distance downward. Okay, so so be careful if you if you're one of the people that that just get so excited. Oh, oh, okay. Be careful because when things happen that that affect uh, you in, in a negative way, it can take you down just as far as you did when you were excited. Okay, and so uh, no one stays balanced like this in your emotions or in your mind. No, no one does this. It's just like um, uh, when, when you have an a EKG. EKG goes like this, right? It does, it, if, it, if it flatlines, what does that mean? You're dead. But it goes like this. Now, now when there is, is difficulties, there, there is uh, stressors, that thing will start going up and down 
large or why? Because there has, has been, been uh, some, um, some distress that's happened in your life and it's caused a man uh, that, that chart or, or, or graph to go higher and higher. So what I, I try to do is I try to have a life that, that's like this, okay? So the ups, the downs, ups and downs, so they're, so they're not so, so harsh, okay? Um, I don't get too excited about stuff. And then when things happen that, that disappoint me or that causes, uh, if, if there's a death um, in the family or something, I, I don't take deep lows. I, I, I just, just hang toward the middle. That's life in balance, life in balance. And so if you, you can learn that, to Lord, Lord, help me to be even, uh, even keel, man, in my walk with you, Lord. So when the enemy comes in like a, a flood, the spirit will lift up a standard against it. But when a man, the times come when the Bible talks ab about the, 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 the spirit uh, of um, discouragement or the, the spirit of de the depression comes, he says he's given you the garment of praise for the spirit. He called it of heaviness. So um, if we're able to keep in balance, when, the, the, when heaviness comes, you have a way to, to get back to where you need to be. And he's given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The heaviness. That's keeping a man life in balance. I've shared this, Eben, uh, oftentimes, uh, not often, but, but uh, when we have ministered in the past, when I was going through one of, one of the greatest challenges of, of, of my life and the enemy uh, wanted to uh, be put in my spirit uh, to kill myself. Now, it didn't last long, okay, but the thought did come. I remember saying to, to the Lord, I said, Lord, let me sleep. Just, Lord, let me sleep. And the Lord allowed me to go to sleep, and I had, had the, the, a, a, a very restful night. And I remember then as I was traveling, I was traveling through the Siskiyou Mountains, and I was so discouraged with the things that were going on in, in my life. And I was listening to a, a tape. Now, now, those of you who are younger, you, know, you, you probably don't even know what a cassette tape is. <laughs> but, uh, I, when I would travel, I liked listening to ministers, listening to messages, or listening to gospel music. And there was one of my, my um, favorite uh, ministers at the time uh, was uh, a man by the name of Richard D. Hinton out of Chicago. And I had the tape, and I don't even remember what the, what the man was preaching about, okay? I was, I was going through, I was driving, I was, I, was, I was heavy, my spirit was heavy. But I remembered that after he did his, his message that they had an altar call, and the, the tape was still going. They had the altar call, and uh, uh, Apostle Hinton said, young man, you're going through, and he said something to, to someone who was, was in his church at that time. And I'm in my mind, I'm seeing this. And I saw myself as that young man as he talked to him. And he said, you know, God's, God's going to show up in you. He says, um, we're going to pray. And he, he prayed a simple prayer or something. And when he prayed, I felt just a nudge, just a nudge. And I said, huh, driving along. And um, back then, uh, I, I kind of miss those services. Uh, back then, there were some missionaries that were there at the altar and you heard all this going on and uh one of the missionaries said tell the lord thank you 
That's what she said to the, to the young man. She said, tell the Lord, thank you. And it was like she was talking to me. And she said it a third time, tell the Lord, thank you. So I, I finally said, thank you. She said, tell the Lord, thank you again. I said, thank you. Tell him, thank you again. He said, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. About that time, the tape went off. Okay. But that thank you, Jesus, was there. And I remember how, as I began to just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How, how the, the Spirit of God just came into, into that car. I, I, I kind of getting, getting, um, overwhelmed as I'm, as I'm thinking about it. The Spirit of God came into that car and I remember as I was driving through the, the Siskiyou Mountains and how God's love just um, overwhelmed me and I began to just, just, to, just to speak in tongues and I was driving and driving but God's spirit was in that car with me and God was bringing balance to my life. He was bringing balance back to my life. It was there that I saw uh, God able to give me rest in my spirit where I had been confused, where I was confounded, where I was struggling God gave me rest. And I, I will never forget how I felt as, as I went through the, the, the rest of, of, of that mountain uh, uh, range, how I was on the mountaintop with God and how God was just giving me strength and, 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 and encouraging me. And then that's when the scripture came to my mind. He says, George, I've given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And it was there that the, that the spirit of heaviness that I had, all of, 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 of the, the doubts, the fears that I had, all of the guilt that I had, that I had placed upon myself, all of, of the things that, that I had done wrong and I was holding them against me, all of a sudden these things just, just began to become light, light, and they just left the car. God was bringing balance back to my life. And that's what God wants to do for you. God wants to bring balance into your life. Understand that, that, that God knows how to cause you to become balanced, to become even-handed. God knows how to lift up the hung down head. God knows how to, to, to uh, make the crooked paths straight. God knows how to make the, the, the high places the, the, the songwriter said, I'll make the darkness light before you and whatever's wrong, I'll write before you. All the battles I will fight before you and all the high places, the high places in your life, he says, I will bring down. I will bring balance to your life. I will cause, amen, those that have, have cursed you, I will cause a man blessings to come your way. He says, I will bring balance. God wants you to live a balanced life where there has been, and we, 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 we curse a man confusion right now in Jesus' name. We, 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 we curse the enemy that, that comes to fight your mind. We curse it right now in the name of Jesus. I know this is Bible study, but, but I'm, I, it's, I, it's for somebody. God wants to bring peace to your mind. He, want, he doesn't want you struggling all the time. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's what David said, for thou art with me. 
I am not to be in the valley, to live in the valley. I'm not to pitch a tent in the valley. I'm not supposed to buy a build a house in the valley. He says, your job is to go through the valley. So you're not to be in the same place you've been. When you're low, God will bring you up. Amen. He'll allow you to go to the mountaintops. He'll bring, bring your, your, your spirits up. But even when he brings the spirits up, when, when the scripture talks about Peter, James, and John, and how they went with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration, they were there six days, the scripture says. But then the Bible said that after that, they, they saw Jesus talking to Elijah and talking to a man, to, to uh, Moses. And then the Bible says that they saw none but Jesus. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The disciples saw this, Peter, James, and John. But guess what? They had to go down after they had that encounter. Be careful, brothers and sisters, even when God has blessed you, even when you've been on the mountaintop, you've had a mountaintop experience, understand that you still must come down. Amen. You can't live in the clouds. You got to come back down. And so you've got to prepare yourself to be, uh, to, to be balanced, be evenly balanced, level in your walk with God, you've got to be even-handed. The scripture then, 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 then tells us that, that these, these men were able to use their right hand and their left hand equally. They had that ability. So our bodies, our bodies must be refreshed just as much as your spirits are refreshed your bodies must be refreshed. So that means you've got to rest. You've got to go to sleep. You, you, you've got to take your mind off of, of the, the, the things of the world. Amen. If, you, if you're a mother, amen, you got to take time away from the children. You got to take time away from the husband. You got you, you to gotta have some me time. Amen. Uh, nowadays, uh, many of, 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 of you ladies uh, will go and, and get your manicure and your pedicure, and maybe that's your time. Uh, some of you, maybe it's, it, it's when you get your hair done. Uh, uh, maybe that's your, your time. Uh, a lot of men, uh, they would go to the barber shop, and it's at the barber shop that, that they would talk to other men, and they would chill, and they would begin, begin to talk about uh, uh, sports. When men get together, they don't talk about family. They don't, they don't talk about what's going on and they don't talk about bills. They don't talk about a man what's right or wrong in their family. They get and they talk about what's going on with this, this football team, what's going on with this basketball team, what's, what's going on. Why? It, it, it's getting them out of, of all the trappings that they're going through all the issues that they're going through, it is a way of getting some type of release. My dad and my granddaddy, they, they, they love to go fishing. That, that wasn't my thing, but they love to go fishing. And they could go, they get up early, early in the morning and they would fish all day. And, and for them, uh, I tried fishing, but it was just one of the most boring things to me. Now that's just me, amen. If fishing is for you, Get out there if it causes you to be able to relax. Some people, they boat, they go, they go boating, amen, and they just get out there. For me, I like to go to the beach, amen. I like to go, I like to hear the waters, the, the, the waters, the, the crashing of the waves. I, I, I like that type of thing. It calms me. Every one of us, has something that will cause us to relax. And you need to relax. You need to be balanced. You need to be even-handed. You, 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 you got to have strength in your physical body as well as your spiritual body. One of the great preachers of our, our day, um, Bishop Noel Jones, he, he talks about, uh, he does a lot of swimming. 
he swims a, a lot, and that is to keep himself fit because of how that man preaches. That is a preaching machine, and he is, he is only able to do that if his flesh can keep up. And so that's what we're saying. We've got to be able, amen, to keep up with where God wants us to be. Our bodies have got to be able to, 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 to hang in there as well. And so um, here, these mighty men of King David was example of the two-pronged offense for the people of God and striving for excellence. And that's what we ought to do. We need to strive for excellence. Being balanced. Go to school. Go to school. Amen. God wants you to excel. He wants you to be even-handed. He wants you to know that Bible, but he also wants you to know your lesson. Amen. If, if, if whatever um, God has bent you toward, the Bible said, train up a child in the way that it should go. And when it is old, he will not depart from it. A clearer uh, understanding of that is training up a child in the way that he is bent toward. In other words, I have a son that is bent toward cooking, right? Uh, so he's bent that way. So train up a little child in the way that he's bent to go. So if cooking is, 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 is his forte, then what uh, we should do is that thing is going to stay with him all his life. When he is old, he'll not depart. If you, are, if you love to cook, I don't care if you are, are 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, as long as you're physically capable of doing it, you're going to want to do that. Amen. My dad and my big mama, amen, I loved when, when they would team up for, for my, my favorite, I guess, um, holiday is not Christmas. My favorite holiday is Thanksgiving, I tell you, because, man, you got all that food. Mom and, and uh, big mom and dad would, would team up, and I tell you, man, they would, they would put together a feast. And I used to just love going to big mama's house for Thanksgiving because, amen, big mama was a cook and a half. And she did that until she could do it no more. She loved that. Daddy, daddy loved to cook up until the time that he, his, he went blind uh, from diabetes. He lost the toes on his right foot. He lost his left leg. He could not do any more, but, but that thing was in him. And that thing was in him until he was no longer able to do it. So being even handed means that whatever you're prone to, whatever, whatever that thing is, that, that you're bent toward. I'm not, I, I was not bent uh, like Sister Robin to, 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 uh, to be in IT. I, I, I'm, I'm not a technical person like that. Uh, so I'm not bent that way, amen. And I remember uh, years ago, my time is, is running out. I remember years ago that I took one of those aptitude tests and I wanted the, the test to tell me that I was, I was bent toward, you know, uh, being a stockbroker or uh, being, you know, you know, something that, that really, really made some money. And, uh, you know, you, 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 you do the test and there's no right or wrong answers. So you just, you just fill it out, you know, truthfully, or, you know, you don't know why they're asking this question or that question or whatever. But I, Saints, let me tell you something. I got so up, I was angry when I got my results because I wanted to tell me it to tell me that I was, I was to be a stockbroker, I was going to law, I was, you know, I, I figured it was something like that. It told me your best job is to be into social, be a social worker or a minister. And I got upset. No, I didn't want to do that. 
Guess what? That's exactly what my life has been. It's been some form of social work or ministry. And that thing is in me. Train up a child in the way that he's bent to go. So that's in me and that'll be in me until I die. So being even handed means is that when you know what you're bent toward, go with that with all that you can and then use that for the glory and honor of God. Okay? Become balanced, be even handed. So, so there are things that the church needs. If, if you're a cook, the church need, needs cooks. So you utilize that, that gifting that God has given you, the abilities that God has given you, and then you use that for God's glory and for, the, for God's honor. Some of you all talk a lot. Okay, if God's give, given you the gift of gab, then use the gift of gab not to promote uh, he said, she said, but to promote what Jesus said, to promote what, the, the, what God uh, would want the world to know, promote how God wants to, to, to come into families and to fix families and, and this type of thing. What you're bent to do, if, if, if you're an administrator, be the best administrator you can be. These men, a man of, of mighty men of valor, they were experts in what they did, okay? Remember, their alliance was to the king. Your alliance is to the king, the king of kings and the lord of lords. So when you have your alliance, then you have your abilities, okay? Your, your, your God-given abilities that you can use for his glory. And that makes you even-handed. You know you're not even-handed if you're doing something, amen, um, that, that um, you really don't know how to do it. <laughs> I remember uh, we, the church that I was, I was going to, I got about three minutes. Uh, please let Sweetie know. Um, uh, there was a brother at, 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 at the church that, that we, went, we uh, um, went to before we start, started New Vision Christian Fellowship. And this, this brother man made sweet potato pies. And let me tell you, those were the nastiest pies that you ever wanted to taste. It, it, it wasn't, wasn't good, but he was selling them. He was selling them, you know, for some reason. And, and I just, I, I, I wanted to encourage the brother. So I said, here, here's the money for the pie. I don't want it, you know. Um, you, you can you give it away to someone else. Um, but he thought that was, that was his, his, his thing. But oh, he was, he was imbalanced in that. <laughs> he was imbalanced in that. What are you, wh wh where is, are you, um, where are you the most comfortable? Now, I know God takes us out of our, our comfort zone, but when we talk about um, uh, being balanced, we have the understanding when God is working and when you're working. God knows how to keep us balanced and God knows how to stretch us so that we can be greater than what we, we, we are. But he wants us even balanced. So uh, in conclusion tonight, I, I want to encourage you, encourage you to be even balanced, even handed, being able to, to uh, have the weapons of our warfare, know how it is to pray, to fast, these, these different uh, 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 weapons that God has given us be able to utilize them to, to the, your greatest extent. But also on the other hand, let's make sure that our bodies are being taken care of. Make sure that our bodies are rested. Make sure that, that we are, are eating um, uh, better. Now, I, I, hey, I, I, have, I have my issues. I told you about the sweets and stuff and, and fried foods and, and with my heart condition, there are things that I should not be doing, okay? So 
I'm preaching to myself, okay? But God is trying to say to us, be even-handed. Even-handedness brings balance in our lives. All right, God bless you. We thank you for spending this hour with us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had today to come into these homes. Father, we pray that, that the words that went forth today nurtured someone, Lord Jesus, and caused them to, to, to think about ba being balanced in their lives. And Father, we pray that, that you strengthen them, Lord Jesus, that they will be the mighty men and women of valor, that we will serve you, we'll, our alliance is to you, and Father, that we will live lives that are in balance. And when we find in balance, when we, that we are in balance, help us, Lord, to become balanced again. Help us not to go too high. Help us not to go too low. But Lord, help us to be even-handed. Help us to be, uh, maintain our, our balance in life. And we will praise you for it. And all the glory and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you next time.